Hello guys, it is Jacob here with another tip video. What I've prepared for you today is like some people ask me how to survive Statue of Might or other Degen, Degen notes. So if you would like to add like Statue of Might into your uh, map experience. Well, there are a few notes on Statue of Might that you can take to decrease the damage that it gives. But that's not what I will focus on in this video. I will focus on defensive layers and regeneration specifically for HP and mostly for energy shield, but I will have I will give you some tips for HP as well. So yeah, let's get into it. The main thing that will help you with surviving statue of might or other degeneration would be your resistances, so try to cap them out. And also, you, what you can get is sources of maximum resistances. So you can get your resistances to, uh, to like easily to 70%, semi easily to 80 and getting to 90 will take you some investment, but it is also possible. So if you get your resistances to 75% or even 80, you will definitely feel the difference in survivability. And now I will show you sources of, of how to do it basically. Simple sources of uh, like maximum resistances would be on your gear. Some of the gear provides you with maximum resistances directly, right? like Cicada shell. Chest armor provides you with plus one elemental resistances. We can check it right here. I mean, it is not a good armor anymore or not that good. It is good for its price. But yeah, Cicada. This one, as you can see, provides you with max resistances. You can get these on Dreamcrafts. You can get these on Corrupts. Uh, even I believe even some crafted mods have them. Some of the higher end crafting crafting mod crafting mods have them as well. So maximum resistance is through gearing. Will cost you something. Will cost you uh, skills. Uh, will cost you uh, like attribute slots on items. Yeah, it's a choice. But another and the the easiest choice that you can do. To get more maximum resistances would be one of your passive passive skills here, and at elemental resistance aura, which on its base on level 16 gives you 8% max resistance. I believe that's 8% all the time, no matter what the skill level is. But you can scale this 8% with aura effect notes on your tree or on your uh, or mods on your items, or also like <coughs> support links and you can you can easily get like 12 of or 13 percent only from this aura basically so that would put you to 73 percent already just by using the aura so that gives you a, that would give you a lot of survivability another sources of maximum uh, resistance would be your uh, would be your memories you can get like up to 2% I believe on your memories, 2% maximum resistances. Yeah, so maximum resistances gives you a lot of survivability. Another defensive flair which you would need to swap in or need to if you need more survivability in Statue of Might or other fire damage. Uh, damage o fire damage over time. You can slot in frost shield, which uh, in my case would give me 33% reduction of physical damage and fire damage taken. So that's another 33% <coughs> that you take off of the damage over time. Uh, what you want to pair that with for uptime would be extended duration, cooldown reduction, and some trigger skill. My trigger skill of choice would be skills activation medium preparation with like six seconds or yeah six seconds or shorter six or five seconds and I would put this in the skill lasts for five seconds so if you have any like duration uh, multipliers on your gear or on your passives 
you can get this to six seconds and then six seconds trigger would put you to like uh, the optimal uptime which would be 100% uptime of frost shield so 33% here I don't have it leveled I don't use it yet but yeah that's source of the source of fire damage mitigation here um after all that after you get your like resistances sorted and you start using your uh, frost shield and you still feel like that's not enough you are still dying you don't have enough regen you need to get sources of regeneration for hp builds those would be uh, either on your gear slots but on gear slots most of the times i tend to not to put them on my gear slots because there are other more important mods so what you can get is get them on your passive points i'm not sure in which three uh, <coughs> there are like uh, uh, like uh, life region nodes but there are definitely like some life region nodes like you can see right here eight percent point eight percent of life regenerated per second yeah and you can find multiple of those on the tree so you can get them on your talents trees and what you can get on these talent points you can also get on your slates so that would be that uh, another thing that you can add would be for hp specifically it would be rejuvenation aura which gives you flat life regeneration i mean this is probably if you have a slot open and you have some sealed mana or sealed life open you can put it in but that's not much like 75 life even scaled up even 100 is not much and a uh, better choice and if you have the like sealed mana for it the better choice would be this summon frost spirit which regenerates percentage of your life per second but it consumes 20% of your mana so 5% regeneration for 20% of your mana that would be my choice if i wanted to slot some passive skill what's good on this mod is that it scales with your maximum life pool so the the more life you get over time the higher value you will get from this passive skill basically so that's why this would be my choice um for active skills the game tells you that pretty much on level one you click restoration skills you get one on your level one compound source or other healing sources like life source <coughs> regenerates your life so you have basically life regeneration on demand here which the regeneration skills heal here last for some period of time like two seconds four seconds here yeah you get the idea so you tap it it's like a potion in other games so you tap it you get your regeneration going that's it and that's pretty much it for what you can do with your hp uh oh no one more thing we also have things like uh life regain and energy regain energy shield regain uh, let me see if I can find it somewhere real quick here life regain energy shield regain so we are talking about life for now so life regain is like pseudo um, a life leech in this game but not really it is just another source of passively re regenerating or regaining your life it is on its own inter internal cooldown of 0.5 seconds which can be lowered throughout gear and or passive points and it also you get 3% from this node for example but the amount you have uh, has higher effectivity as your uh, or efficiency yeah a higher effectivity as your um, percentage life goes lower you get more uh, goes lower you get more uh, value regained if you have more of this basically it basically does not let you regain 100% of your life but for example if you have 50% of your life you get 
50% value of your of your life regain per hit or per proc. So it is not it is not uh, tied to your damage, but rather it is its own its own like mod basically. As you get life regeneration, then you get life regain, which works when you are hitting monsters and has its internal cooldown and is tied on its own value, not tied to your damage. And energy shield regain works the same, by the way. Now, that would be all the sources of regaining or regener regenerating your life. I will move to energy shield, which does, does not have as many options in the active department, but has a lot of options in passive ones. And I like the approach of energy shield a lot more than life. But yeah, let's get into it. So passive regeneration for energy shield. What do we have if we are scaling energy shield? We have energy shield recharge. Uh, can I get energy shield charge? <clears throat> so energy shield starts to recharge in in an interval like when you are not taking damage for two seconds, your energy shield starts to regenerate in automatically and the speed of the recharge <clears throat> is scaled by this specific mod, energy shield charge speed, which you can get on passive points, on slates, on some other talent nodes, on gear as well. Yeah, what's the issue with this is if you take damage, any kind of damage, when your energy shield is charging, the energy shield charge stops. So what you are looking for anywhere is a source of getting the energy shield charge, uh, uh, getting uninterruptible energy shield charge for some period of time. <clears throat> so for example, in Warlock 3, you get this note on like level 18 uh, of Warlock 3. You get energy shield charge cannot be interrupted by damage for one second after it starts. So this gives you one second of uninterrupted energy shield charge. You can get four seconds if you are willing to spend your pedigree of gods or you are specced into uh, Magister. You can get Barrier of Radiance, which gives you energy shield charge started recently, cannot be interrupted by, dim by damage. Recently means in the last four seconds. So this gives you four seconds of uninterrupted energy shield charge and it also gives you 50% energy shield charge speed. So if you use this node, in combination with one other node that I show that I will show you in a minute or in a few seconds, you are basically able to regenerate your entire energy shield pool in those four seconds interval. So this gives you like yeah, this would make you pretty much immortal unless you get one shot. Uh, and the other node that I'm talking about would be also in Magister Three, and that would be this one immediately starts energy shield charge upon entering the low energy shield status. What you need to keep in mind with this note, if you don't have en enough energy shield charge speed or uh, like large enough energy shield pool and you are not able to regenerate your energy shield above the threshold of low energy shield, this note will not proc the energy shield charge again. So you will basically die, but you will you would die slower because you would be regenerating your energy shield for four seconds or for one second from Warlock. So what you want to make sure is to get immortal is to have large enough energy shield pool and large enough charge speed to be able to regenerate above low life. So you can then drop to low life again and then this procs again. It does not have any internal cooldown. You just need to be above and you need to drop to the low energy shield state level. So that's for this. And you, if you don't have like this, you can get uh, this from Warlock as well. Energy shield charge cannot be interrupted for one second after it starts. If you don't have access to either Warlock or Magister, you can get any of those nodes on your <coughs> slates. 
and you can even get the barrier of radiance on your pedigree which is the large yellow slate which looks like this you can get barrier of radiance of on this one so yeah that would be like passive sources of energy shall charge start from your uh, talent trees and now let's move into gear there are two specific pieces that can give you like either energy shield start or un or uninterruptible energy shield and those two would be this armor twilight vestment when you are playing any like damage over time build you will definitely know about this armor whenever you reap energy shield start charges uh, energy shield starts charging immediately so you are reaping pretty much all the time on any damage over time build so this keeps broken all the time if you pair that with the one second energy uninterruptible energy shield from warlock or from slates uh, your energy shield should never like stop charging so this armor w works pretty really well for that but if you don't play <laughs> dot build or you don't have a source of reap or yeah there is another source or another option on the gear which would be a belt called light hunter belt it would be this one and that gi that gives you energy shell charge cannot be interrupted what that means is whenever your energy shell start charging it can never be interrupted by damage the downside of this of this belt is there are actually two possible downsides it converts it converts 30% of your 40% uh, of your life to energy shield when you are energy shield based build then this mod is great it gives you like 40% of your life to energy shield awesome uh, the downside is when you are like mixed build like hybrid build where when you scale hp and energy shield as well then this basically lowers your energy uh, your life pool and converts it to energy shield yeah you get the idea another downside of this belt is in this mod here six percent additional energy shield charge speed for every five percent energy shield currently owned what that means is basically whenever you start charging you can never charge uh, to full energy shield again if you corrupt this mod uh, the six percent changes into four which means you can regenerate like 80 percent i believe of your energy shield and then the energy shield charge does not stop but your energy shield starts does not recharge higher than that <clears throat> so yeah that's really like nice cheap way of never ending energy shield charge how you can uh, like make this work really greatly is do damage to yourself at the start of the map by any source like you can use uh, you can use let me see you can use burst of anger which damages you when you cast it can i try it uh this gives you like a source of self damage so basically if i pop it you see i take like 100 damage per second and now whenever the energy shield would start charging now the the you would not see the energy shield charging because you would still be above the threshold of the light hunter belt but your energy shield charge is in progress and when you drop below the light hunter's threshold you would be regenerating your energy shield all the time basically so that's what you can use you can do self damage at the start of the map wait for your energy shield charge to start which takes two seconds after you stop taking damage and then you can just run the entire map without worrying about your energy shield charge ever stopping <coughs> so that's how you can use light hunter belt for active regeneration for uh, uh, energy shield there are not many cho so, uh, like choices there's pretty much only one reliable one and that would be uh, for start 
what forces does if you don't have any other sources of the uninterruptible energy shield charge this starts your energy shield charge when you press it but if you are taking continuous damage the energy shield charge immediately stops uh, rendering this skill useless pretty much so what people do or you, what you can do is link it with, link it with defense layers or defense layers which gives you when casting the supported skill energy shield cannot be energy shield charge cannot be interrupted by damage for one second so it basically does the same thing as the uh, warlock uh, passive points give us but you have it on a skill link so this is a good choice uh, Defense layers is a good choice for those builds that do not have access to the Warlock Passive Tree, uh, Warlock Passive Tree, or uh, Goddess of Deception uh, slates for your statue of the God. Um, what else? You want to pair for start every time that you have it. You want to pair it with cooldown reduction because you want to have it accessible as often as possible if you don't have access to the warlock or uninterruptible energy shield charge then you want to pair it with defense layers as well which will give you one second of energy shield recharge whenever you pop it and what is really nice and what you can pair for start with is this passive uh, like activation medium skill called activation medium energy shield which starts your energy shield whenever you are lower than some threshold. What I would suggest you to get here is like 80 or 75% because once you get high or large enough energy shield pool and high enough energy shield charge speed you should be able to regenerate 20% of your energy shield easily in the span of one second. So yeah what is also nice about this is that it works all the time as long as you are you are uh, under the threshold so if you are under 80 percent and you are not able to regenerate above the 80 percent it will still keep triggering even if you are under the threshold it does not work like the passive from magister so that, that's also a reason why you want to get the cooldown on the four start to as low or as fast as possible so you can trigger it multiple times before you die basically so yeah that would be for energy shield activation medium energy shield that would be my main link here if i would be using it defense layers and cooldown reduction main free links if you are using uh warlock tree and you have the one second uninterruptible energy shield you don't need to use defense layers what defense layers also provide you with is a little bit of energy shield charge speed which is nice so if you have the energy for it and you have the free skill slot just slot it in you will be able to regenerate more energy shield if you have even more energy and you want some more like defense from it you can slot in iron fortification for <clears throat> like armor or there's one for evasion i believe as well at least was okay there's not anymore yeah this one gives you evasion as well so yeah so those are more like defensive values that you can get from this um you can also get like the one second energy shield recharge on your frost shield that's like next level mechanic you can get defense layers here as well and if you pop them manually one second apart like you pop your four start you start regenerating on energy shield and before the one second ends you pop your frost shield then you have two seconds of energy shield uh, uninterruptible energy shield charge so yeah that that is really awesome or you can just use for start with the warlock passive and then in the span of one second you pop frost shield and you get another second of energy shield recharge which allows you to recharge even more energy shield in the span of the two seconds basically 
Um, those would be the active skills. Uh, the larger your energy shield pool is, and the higher your energy shield charge speed is, the more value you will get from your one or two seconds of energy shield recharge, because the energy shield charge uh, recharges per percentage of your energy of your maximum energy shield per second. So the larger your pool gets, the higher your charge speed gets, the higher value you will get from either of those. And that would be it. It protects you from wild damage, from ignite damage, from any other source of like on ground damage over time. Yeah, that's my 25 minutes of explaining regeneration. Hope you guys find it useful. If you do, please leave me a like, subscribe to the channel for more tips. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.